Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today we're going to be refining gold off of some of these actual computer parts. These are RAM fingers and uh, some sort of uh, circuit board here. They're both coated in gold and uh, today we're going to be extracting it. Now I thought about using uh, nitric acid again, which is certainly doable because it's just a basically a 22 karat gold coating or something like that. It's very thin, so it would be fairly easy to do it with acid, just you know, use a dilute acid and uh, dissolve the gold off of it. But you know, I've been dissolving it with acid basically this whole time, so I thought I'd change it up a little bit. And I ended up uh, grabbing some iodine from the store. And I think I'll try dissolving some of it with iodine, maybe off of these uh, ram fingers here. And since I'm going to be doing these separate, because I want to you know, separate them to see how much gold I get off of each, perhaps I'll do cyanide on these. Let's uh, weigh everything. Well, I bought this scale, I may as well. And I'll tell you how much mass those fingers I have. Of course most of that mass is uh, fiberglass. So The idea here is that the elemental iodine in solution will form a complex with the gold, dissolving it and making it water soluble. And uh, then all I've got to do is extract the gold from the solution, which uh, will be later in this video. So for now, let's just pour in this iodine here, which is a mixture of sodium iodide, elemental iodine, and a little bit of alcohol. The alcohol really doesn't do anything here. But uh, let's add these in, and let them sit overnight and see if it dissolves the gold. Uh, I'm going to actually cover the iodine with something because the elemental iodine will vaporize out over time. And uh, you'll notice I'm actually doing this indoors because the iodine is fairly safe compared to the acid. Now you can see that I've cut up those circuit boards and put them inside of this glass bottle. And I'm going to be leaching the gold off of them using cyanide. So let's make the leaching solution now. So to start I'm going to add some potassium hydroxide. This will uh, keep everything basic because if it becomes acidic the cyanide will actually turn into hydrogen cyanide which uh, produces vapors which are toxic. So let's uh, dissolve this with a little bit of distilled water. There we go. Now uh, here's the cyanide. This is uh, sodium cyanide by the way. It's a very useful chemical because it can do many many things. Uh, I've done a video about making cyanide and actually Nerd Rage has just made a video about making sodium cyanide so I'll post uh, links to those in the description and uh, perhaps I'll do another uh, better video about making cyanide later on. Alright so that's mostly dissolved. Now in order to get the cyanide to dissolve the gold it needs a source of oxygen. So you could use the air but that's fairly slow especially if you're using a sealed container. So I'm going to splash in a little bit of uh, hydrogen peroxide. That'll be my uh, source of oxygen. Uh, this uh, reaction actually produces hydrogen peroxide as an intermediate anyway, so this just speeds up the process. There's my gold dissolving solution. Let's add it into this uh, container and see if it'll dissolve it. Okay, it looks like all the uh, gold is dissolved. There's a little bit of a base metal underneath the gold by the looks of it, but uh, shouldn't cause too much trouble. Let's just pour it off and so we can deal with the liquid. Hopefully that contains lots and lots of gold. Probably don't, but I'm sure it's got some. So now I've got to get rid of the peroxide because if I try to drop the gold out now, the cyanide will just dissolve it back in. So I'm just going to add a little bit of yeast here and the yeast will uh, catalytically destroy the peroxide. See the bubbles of oxygen coming up as the yeast destroys the peroxide? I couldn't find any uh, zinc powder because, well, I'm not back at the ranch, but uh, pieces of aluminum foil ought to do just as well. So the idea here is the aluminum will actually replace the gold in solution. So it'll make it uh, aluminum dissolved in solution and the gold should fall out as a solid. So that's the theory anyway. The little bit of potassium hydroxide in there should actually begin reacting with the aluminum. And I believe it is. That's not really a problem. That'll actually help us out because it'll dissolve away that aluminum oxide coating. See, so it'll expose the fresh aluminum to the gold. Well, this is probably going to take quite a while for that gold to fall out, so let's go do something else. Okay, let's uh, pull this off and see how the iodine's doing. Yeah, it looks like uh, the material has dissolved away some of the gold. You see there. But unfortunately, the uh, solution appears to have gone clear. That means the iodine is no longer elemental and in solution. 
which means it's probably stopped dissolving the gold and there might be some gold down in the bottom of that as a black powder. Let's look at this. Yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of gold still on there. Let's actually let this go for a little bit longer. But in order to do that, I've got to convert the iodine back into elemental form. So let's uh, do that now. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of acid to the solution. It's just a hydrochloric acid. Yeah, that alone might actually, yeah, needs an oxidizer. Let's oxidize it with a little bit of a hydrogen peroxide here. There we go. Now we got some iodine in the solution. Okay, this has actually sit for quite a bit longer since the last cut. Notice the solution is still brown. So as long as it's brown, I should have the gold still dissolved. Okay, now that I've got these rinsed off, so there's not very much iodine on them. We should see. Yeah, most of the gold's gone. You can actually see the fiberglass underneath where the gold used to be. Very nice. So it's taking it off. There is one issue I'm seeing though. This uh, stuff, the sludge left in the bottom of the container, I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually got some little sparklies, like there's little bits of gold in it. Uh, so I think the iodine must have caused some of the pieces of gold just to flake off of this and then sink to the bottom, and uh, it hasn't been dissolved. So either I need to dissolve this up, or just put it into the furnace along with whatever else I get. Yeah, pretty much the same story here in the filter. You see these little bits of gold that are in it. So it didn't dissolve all the gold, unfortunately. As you can see, I've transferred the iodine solution into this other beaker. And I'm going to add in a little bit of a potassium hydroxide solution. This should convert the uh, iodine back into a salt rather than its elemental form. Okay, this has got a little bit of a reaction going. Oh, you know what I bet it is? I bet it's the peroxide coming out of solution because the uh, potassium iodide is now de decomposing the peroxide. So this is oxygen. Interesting. <laughs> there must be the gold, right there. And there's probably a lot of copper as well. You can tell because of the blue color. At least it looks like I'm going to be able to filter it out pretty clear. All the stuff's being caught up here. Okay, so here's the pieces of paper that I used as filters. You notice they're uh, brown and crispy. That's because I just took them out of the oven and as I was drying them off. And now I'm just going to break all the stuff that's on them off. And then, uh, then I'll put this stuff into a crucible and furnace it down. And then extract all the gold from it. Alright, so I'm going to leave the lid open on this. So it'll actually oxidize all that uh, paper and uh, hopefully the copper as well. That way we're left with just the noble metals when we're done. I didn't see any metal, did you? Well, hopefully there's some in there at all. Okay, so it's now cooled off. And I was looking through this. I didn't really see anything that looked like gold until I turned this one around. And look at that. There's a little bead inside there. Let's uh, get that out and see how much it weighs, shall we? So here's those ram fingers, and here's the gold that I recovered off of them. So small you can hardly see it. There, that's better. Now you can see it. A little tiny bead of gold here. Yeah, it's probably not 100% pure. You notice its color is a little bit off. It's probably got a little bit of copper in there, but uh, it's pretty much too small for me to try to refine it on its own. So let's just weigh it and uh, figure that it's mostly gold. Here we go. Oh, just under a third of a gram. So 0.2, actually that's a quarter of a gram, isn't it? That's certainly not very much. All right, let's uh, go work on the other thing. Okay, here's the uh, cyanide solution. I've been adding uh, aluminum foil to it to help drop the gold out and uh, as you can see, the aluminum is completely dissolved. There's a little bit stuck to the glass right there. Yeah. And uh, you can see there's uh, some material down at the bottom, which is probably primarily from the aluminum. But hopefully there's also some gold in there. Now as for the uh, intense color that it has, I'm thinking that's actually not copper, but rather little tiny micro fine particles of gold giving it that color. So it's uh, Basically a little bit of uh, colloidal gold in solution. I don't think there's a whole lot there, so I'm just going to pour this off into the container here. Maybe I'll let it settle out over a couple of weeks and see if there's any significant amount of gold in it. 
All right, just like last time, I got some uh, borax flux in a crucible. And I'm going to add in this uh, cementation slime that I filtered out of the cyanide solution. Oops, let me fix that. <laughs> For those of you worried about the leftover cyanide solution, it's nothing a little bit of bletch won't be able to take care of. Just throw that in there. Goodbye cyanide. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Okay, so I found gold. It's still stuck inside the crucible. So, I'm going to take this and put this stuff back in and heat it up again. Give it a little bit more time for the beads to come together. All right, let's do this again. Let's see if we have a bead of gold. Ooh, that is mighty warm. Did it come out this time? I don't see any in there, so it must have. All right, let's let it cool off. It's, it's still got a little bit of slag on it, but there's that bead of gold. Yeah, this one's very pretty, although it's uh, very small. And uh, here's the uh, bead that I extracted earlier. Yeah, so there it is. You notice the uh, cyanide process produced a much purer product by the looks of it. Let's uh, weigh this little guy, see how much it weighs. Fortunately, I have a scale that can actually do it. There it goes. Not quite a tenth of a gram. Both of them together. Let's see what that weighs. There, now we got about a third of a gram. So, two days worth of work and I managed to get a third of a gram of gold. How about that? <laughs> uh, I guess it really isn't worth it unless you can do tons and tons of this stuff. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.